happy to have here Professor Eduardo Villa. Good afternoon. Again, thank you very much. Pedrito. <laughs> Susan, that was good. But I want to highlight two, three things. First, I want to apologize for my bad English. And I try to speak as better as I can, but in this moment it's very difficult to, to get the proper word. And uh, Peter and, uh, and we, really with us, with Martin, with some people in Colombia, we create an organization that the name is Sistemas Humanos, and we created 25 years ago. And it's still running, and we teach systemic ideas in Colombia, not only in therapy, but we are using that in many, many different fields. Peter was, and continued to be, very, very generous to us. And I, when I said us, is many people in Colombia. It's a, li a, a big list, I don't want to tell all of them. But uh, is the relation with the students with the, we have in Colombia. And we say one of the big characteristics of Peter is generosity, open, clever, curious a very nice storyteller, many of the things you listen to during the morning, and I, I'm not going to repeat, but you every knows all this beautiful and generosity of Peter. During these 25 years, he went to Colombia. Every year, at least twice in some years, I think like in Greece in the last year, but Peter and Alfred and Susan and John Berham was basically the people who used to go to Colombia and teach us. We create the diploma as if we were in KCC during many years. 
and we teach more than 300 people <coughs> now. Psychologists, social workers, lawyers. One of the aspects one of the aspects of the people remember more Peter is the sense of humor, his coherence between theory and practice, and the way he presents his ideas and his work. He always starts with a story and always present during the workshops new ideas for us in a relation with the readings, investigations and work, his ability to play and connect all the time his reflections, creating a bigger space for curiosity and new constructions and possibilities. As Vernon uh, uh, said this morning about the frog story. Do you know the frog story? Ah, the frog story. In, uh, is one day arrive a very optimistic man and meet a very pessimistic one. And the uh, pessimistic said to the optimistic, okay, why are you so optimistic? Ah, it's very easy. I wake every day at five in the morning. I go out to the garden and look for a frog, and I swallow the frog. And I said, nothing worse could be during the day. <laughs> okay, the pessimist said, okay, I'm going to do the same. They meet one year after, the optimist, more optimist, and the pessimist, more pessimist. And said, what happened with you? I, I tell you what do you, you have to do. Yes, I do it every day. Tell me, what are you doing? I go, not five, four in the morning, and I choose the ugliest frog I see in the garden, and I take it, I say, oh, shit, I have to do this tomorrow again. It is there. It is there. I met Peter at Mosley Hospital in 1988. We, we had a group in Colombia and we started reading. I was really, I was before in Italy working with Franco Vasari. And at that time we, we, uh, we see many families but we don't have enough uh, instruments or way of thinking because we were training very psychoanalytical way. And in Trieste, you can, you can work whatever you want. And there's conditions, but free is the first one. And the second one is to share a story with all the people doing it every day in the, in the hospital. And when I saw about the Milan, I was in Trieste 1976. And that, in that moment in Italy, it's about her mental health all around. And in this moment, the Milan approach became very, very important in Italy and then outside. And uh, I, with some people, decide to read some of these papers and try to, to do family therapy as Milan approach. We think they did. And in 1988, I had the opportunity to come to Mosley Hospital and uh, was, I was in London two or three months. Justin Schlicht was the director of the, the Department of Family Therapy and they used to invite someone every Tuesday, one of the more important uh, do doctors or people in the field of family therapy. And for me, the last Tuesday, Peter Lam arrived. And he spoke about the work he's doing, and he spoke about CMM, about Vernon Cronin's and Barnett Pierce's work. And I was in love with that. I started to understand about double bind, the strange loops, and all these things they played with, and for me it was a revelation. After that, I approached Peter and I said, Peter, I want to learn more from you. He said, okay, come to KCC. And uh, I, that was Tuesday. 
I leave on Sunday. Uh, okay, we make an appointment on Friday. <laughs> and they send a very British, a very nice invitation. I receive an envelope with the address, with the query the tube station, how long how, how it will go, it's going to take to arrive to that. And I arrive at 2 p.m. and I met Elspeth and Peter. And that's <coughs> Well, the beginning of a wonderful relation between both, and then Susan go to the team, and we start this relation. I invite Peter, and they came the first time in Colombia in nine, nine, 1989. 89, yes. And uh, I don't know, I'm lost. In, uh, One of the, the, the first seminar they call systemic therapy at Milan approach. And I don't have time, I don't want to tell you all the, the seminars they did and Peter's did during these 20 years. But if I said to you the titles, one is how we play and we can teach and be useful in schools and in uh, in other uh, fields, new ways of work, different perspectives, and uh, how we, we can use the ideas as you are, all of you are, with the students of both about the sexual abuse. And uh, one very, very important was to start to create, as you said in the last 20 minutes, about creating the future and about the creating the future for our society. And that creates a very important, I think for Bogotá, a very important issue because we arranged a meeting with the mayor of the city. He became a very well-known mayor, Antanas Mocos, and he was close six years ago to be president of Colombia. But, okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. But during the period of Antares was Peter and also did a very nice workshop with the, all the team of the of, the, of, his, of his team, and all the ideas about future, about create a space and the dialogue between the city was very very important. And the people in Colombia, basically in Bogota, remember how important was Antares for the government and how important was Peter. I met uh, Antanas two months ago. He was very warm with me. And I was, the first question is, how is Peter? I want to read papers from Peter. And I promised him to bring someone back when I go to, I'm going to see him in the next month. And I promised to him to do that, the Peter. And, uh, In uh, 1993, we create Sistemas Humanos. As I told you, we teach people, more than 300 people. And the, in Colombia, every day, the people need more an official diploma, an official certificate. Then we decided with Peter to move and look for a university. And we approached to Universidad Central. Here is a mistake, it's not, it's not National University, but it's Central, Universidad Central of Bogotá. And we are now in the seventh year of a master's program. The title of the master's program is Intervention in Human Systems. Una maestría en intervención en sistemas humanos. And this is very, very important for us and I hope for the city. At the beginning we were very few, there are around groups of eight people, but now it's a two years master's program, and now we have more than 80 people assistants. We have 20 teachers from the government of the city, and I think we are creating a very nice space to all these ideas to, to be continuing and growing, Peter and Elspeth and Susan, 
the sea on us. And the other group is about the police. In Colombia, as you know, we are in a war, I don't know, if the last 500 years. Other people say 100 years, other 60 years. But we are in a very difficult situation and the government is trying to do a conversation with the guerrilla, guerrillas in Cuba now. And everybody speaks what happened in the, in the country if they sign the peace. Is the, pre, the, the peace process is finished and what is the next step? And the next step, how we're going to manage a post-conflict culture, or post-conflict, uh, yes, country. And they arrived 30 high, very high position of policemen. And they want to learn about systemic ideas. And in Colombia, we are very, very few people speaking about systemic ideas. And for that reason, I think it could be a very nice opportunity to help the country to be more useful for the country. And I think this is, thank you, thank you, Pedrito, Elspeth, and Susan. Okay, I think this is in the two. I, I, I want to finish to, to say that uh, one of the more important, uh, as someone told this, uh, the, the, uh, this morning, ideas of Perditos, problems as, as frustrated dreams. And I think working with that, with the people in the city, with the teachers and with the police became a very, very important tool and they are doing some very nice work that I can tell you later, some examples of that. And I want to finish putting another piece of music. I remember one night with Peter, I don't know, until three or four in the morning, listening to Don Giovanni, and looking who is the most beautiful singer who sings Il Mio de Solo. And I want to put only a little one, a, a bit, one minute, bit, for Fritz Wunderlich, that Peter introduced me. He was one of the more important singers in, uh, in, 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 in the opera and in the classical music.